Hi friends, it's Mr. Matthews from St. Dennis Church, and welcome to this week's Children's Liturgy of the Word for September 20th, 2020, the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, you are always near and ready to pour your blessings on us. Help us to be open to you and grateful for your presence in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. The first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Turn to the Lord. He can still be found. Call out to him. He is near. Give up your wicked ways and your evil thoughts. Return to the Lord your God. He will be merciful and forgive all your sins. The Lord says, My thoughts and my ways are not like yours. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll say our responsorial psalm. The Lord is near to all who call on him. Now you say it. The Lord is near to all who call on him. Lord, I will praise you each day and always honor your name. You are wonderful, Lord, and you deserve all praise because you are much greater than anyone can understand. The Lord is near to all who call on him. You are merciful, Lord. You are kind and patient and always loving. You are good to everyone, and you take care of all your creation. The Lord is near to all who call on him. Our Lord, everything you do is kind and thoughtful, and you are near to everyone whose prayers are sincere. The Lord is near to all who call on him. Alleluia, alleluia. Now you say it. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And remember to make a cross on your forehead, on your lips, and on your heart. As Jesus was telling what the kingdom of heaven would be like, he said, Early one morning, a man went out to hire some workers for his vineyard. After he had agreed to pay them the usual amount for a day's work, he sent them off to his vineyard. About nine that morning, the man saw some other people standing in the market with nothing to do. He said he would pay them what was fair if they would work in his vineyard. So they went. At noon and again at about three in the afternoon, he returned to the market, and each time he made the same agreement with others who were loafing around with nothing to do. Finally, about five in the afternoon, the man went back and found some others standing there. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. Then he told them to go work in his vineyard. That evening, the owner of the vineyard told the man in charge of the workers to call them in and give them their money. He also told the man to begin with the ones who were hired last. When the workers arrived, the ones who had been hired at five in the afternoon were given a full day's pay. The workers who had been hired first <clears throat> thought that they would be given more than the others. But when they were given the same, they began to complaining to the owner of the vineyard. They said, The ones who were hired last worked only one hour, but you paid them the same that you did us. And we worked in the hot sun all day long. The owner answered one of them, Friend, I didn't cheat you. I paid you exactly what we agreed on. Take your money now and go. What business is it of yours if I want to pay them the same that I paid you? 
Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Why should you be jealous if I want to be generous? Jesus then said, So it is. Everyone who is now first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, think of this. I'm going to say a sentence, but I want you to fill in the blank. Ready? It isn't fair when. So, think of what you would say in that spot. It isn't fair when. Think about that for a minute. So, it's not fair. <clears throat> Have you ever said those words? Let's be honest now. Uh, let's see, maybe your brother or sister uh, were invited to go to the movies with a friend or something like that, and you weren't invited. Um, what was your reaction? Probably, that's not fair. Why can't I go too? Or maybe you came home from school looking forward to watching your favorite show on TV, and your mom says, you can't watch TV until you finish your homework. Ah, oh, Mom, that's not fair. By the time I finish my homework, my favorite show will be over. Does that sound kind of familiar? When we say it's not fair, it usually means that something isn't going our way or that we want something that someone else has. So I asked you to fill out that uh, question. It's not fair when. And... Now think about, in your mind, why you didn't think that was fair. Probably because you wanted something that somebody else had, or because you didn't think you were getting something that you deserved, right? Or usually it's because you think that somebody else is getting more than you're getting, and you should get the same amount. Something like that. That's usually why we complain about things not being fair. In our Bible lesson today, Jesus told a story about a landowner who was hiring some men to work in his vineyard. Do you know what a vineyard is? It's a big, it's a big, big garden, like a farm, where they grow grapes to make wine. So it was a, that was a very big and important thing to do back in Jesus' day, where he lived, in the Holy Land. So this vineyard owner hired some workers early in the morning. He hired some other ones in the middle of the day. And then he hired some other guys, some other workers, just before quitting time. But when it was time to pay all the workers, he paid them all the same. So can you guess what the workers who were hired in the morning said? That's right. They said, hey, that's not fair. You paid the workers who worked only one hour the same as those of us who worked all day. It's not fair, right? The owner of the vineyard said, <clears throat> I'm not being unfair to you. I paid you what I agreed to pay you, didn't I? Don't I have the right to do what I want to do with my own money? Then he said something important. He said, are you jealous just because I'm generous? So the question for us today is, is God fair? Well, of course he is, right? Of course God's fair. But you know what else? The Bible tells us that God is more than fair. The Bible tells us that God is love. So, here's a question for you. Does God love us just because we love him? No. The Bible says, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son Jesus as a sacrifice to take away our sins so that we could go to heaven. Wow. That's not fair. That's love. Do you see the difference there? If we got what was fair, in other words, if we got what we deserved, none of us would be able to get to heaven. So let's be glad that God doesn't give us what's fair, but he gives us his love and his grace in spite of what we really deserve. You see, a way to look at it is God doesn't give us what we deserve. God gives us what Jesus deserves for what he did for us. And I know it's kind of difficult to think of that, but when Jesus went to the cross, he purchased something for us. He purchased our ticket to heaven. 
So even though we don't deserve to go there, because everybody sins, because of what Jesus did for us out of love, we get what he deserves. So is that fair? Probably not. But aren't you glad that God is love and he gives us what he wants to give us out of his mercy, not of his generosity? You know, the first reading today, I don't know if you paid attention to that, but the first reading gives us a hint as to why that is. The first reading told us God's ways are not like people's ways. They're not like man's ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how high God's ways are above our ways. We can't even understand how loving and generous and merciful God is, but we can sure be glad that God isn't like people because his idea of fair and our idea of fair are very different. Let's be thankful that God is love. Okay? Amen? So now we're going to uh, say this little prayer together. Dear Father, we are thankful that you love us and treat everyone with mercy and fairness, giving us what Jesus won for us and not what we deserve. We are glad that your ways are not like our ways. Amen. Now let's say our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We believe that God is generous and fair, so we pray together. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders that they may do all they can to make the world a fairer place and make sure that all people have their fair share. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sisters and brothers around the world, especially those who are poor, that every single person may have what they need to live. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the prayers in our parish book of intentions and the St. Dennis prayer chain. We pray especially for Joe Stan, for whom this Sunday's Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now, take a moment and say out loud something or someone that you want to pray for. For these and for all the prayers that we hold deep in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Living Lord, we give thanks for your generosity and love. Help us to take no more than we need, to share all that we have, and to work together for change so that the world becomes a fairer place for everyone. Amen. So thank you for joining me for this week's Children's Liturgy of the Word. And remember to listen to mom and dad, say your prayers, and wash your hands. Okay? Have a great week. Peace. Bye.